Welcome to YQ Academy Hibernate Interview Questions and Answers. 1. What is meant by Hibernate Tuning? Optimizing the performance of Hibernate applications is known as Hibernate Tuning. The performance tuning strategies for Hibernate are 1. SQL Optimization 2. Session Management 3. Data Caching 2. What is Transaction Management in Hibernate? How does it work? Transaction management is a property which is present in the Spring Framework. Now, what role does it play in Hibernate? Transaction management is a process of managing a set of commands or statements. In Hibernate, transaction management is done by transaction interface. It maintains abstraction from the transaction implementation JTA, JDBC. A transaction is associated with session and is instantiated by calling session. Begin transaction. 3. How do you integrate Hibernate with STRUTS Tor Servlet web applications? You can integrate any Strits application with Hibernate. There are no extra efforts required. 1. Register custom Servlet Context Listener. 2. In the Servlet Context Listener class, first, initialize the Hibernate session. Store it in the Servlet context. 3. Action class helps in getting the Hibernate session from the servlet context and perform other Hibernate tasks as normal. 4. What are the different states of a persistent entity? It may exist in one of the following three states. Transient. This is not associated with the session and has no representation in the database. Persistent. You can make a transient instance persistent by associating it with a session. Detached. If you close the Hibernate session, the persistent instance will become a detached instance. 5. How can the primary key be created by using Hibernate? A primary key is a special relational database table column designated to uniquely identify all table records. It is specified in the configuration file HBM. XML. The generator can also be used to specify how a primary key can be created in the database. 6. Explain about Hibernate Proxy and how it helps in lazy loading. Hibernate uses a proxy object in order to support lazy loading. When you try loading data from tables, Hibernate doesn't load all the mapped objects. After you reference a child object through getter methods, if the linked entity is not present in the session cache, then the proxy code will be entered to the database and load the linked object. It uses Java Sys to effectively and dynamically generate subclass implementations of your entity objects. 7. How can we see Hibernate generated SQL on console? In order to view the SQL on a console, you need to add following in Hibernate configuration file to enable viewing SQL on the console for debugging purposes. 8. What is query cache in Hibernate? Hibernate implements a separate cache region for queries result set that integrates with the Hibernate second level cache. This is also an optional feature and requires a few more steps in code. 9. What is the benefit of native SQL query support in Hibernate? Hibernate provides an option to execute native SQL queries through the use of the SQL query object. For normal scenarios, it is, however, not the recommended approach because you might lose other benefits like association and hibernate first level caching. Native SQL query comes handy when you want to execute database specific queries that are not supported by hibernate API such query hints or the connect keyword in Oracle database. 10. What is named SQL query? Hibernate provides another important feature called named query using which you can define at a central location and use them anywhere in the code. You can create named queries for both HQL as well as for native SQL. These named queries can be defined in Hibernate mapping files with the help of JPA annotations at the rate named query and at the rate named native query. 11. When do you use merge and update in Hibernate? This is one of the tricky Hibernate interview questions asked. Update. If you are sure that the Hibernate session does not contain an already persistent instance with the same id, merge helps in merging your modifications at any time without considering the state of the session. 12. Difference between get BS load method and Hibernate. This is one of the most frequently asked Hibernate interview questions. 
The key difference between the get and load method is load. It will throw an exception if an object with an ID passed to them is not found. Get will return null load. It can return proxy without hitting the database unless required. Get. It always goes to the database. So sometimes using load can be faster than the get method. 13. Difference between the first and second level cache in Hibernate. The first level cache is maintained at session level while the second level cache is maintained at a session factory level and is shared by all sessions. 14. Difference between session and session factory in Hibernate. This is yet another popular Hibernate interview question asked. A session is a single-threaded, short-lived object. It provides the first level cache. Session factory is immutable and shared by all session. It also lives until the Hibernate is running. It also provides the second level cache. 15. Difference between save and save your update method of Hibernate. Even though save and save your update method is used to store an object into database, the key difference between them is that save can only insert records, but save your update can either insert or update records. 16. Difference between sorted and ordered collection in Hibernate. Sorted collections sort the data in JVM's heap memory using Java's collection framework sorting methods. The ordered collection is sorted using order by clause in the database itself. Note. A sorted collection is more suited for a small data set but for a large data set. It's better to use ordered collection to avoid. 17. Difference between the transient, persistent and detached state in Hibernate. Transient state. New objects are created in the Java program but are not associated with any Hibernate session. Persistent state. An object which is associated with a Hibernate session is called persistent object. While an object which was earlier associated with Hibernate session but currently it's not associate is known as a detached object. You can call save or persist method to store those object into the database and bring them into the persistent state. Detached state. You can reattach a detached object to Hibernate sessions by calling either update or save your update method. 18. Difference between managed associations and Hibernate associations. Managed associations relate to container management persistence and are bidirectional. Hibernate associations. These associations are unidirectional. 19. What are the best practices that Hibernate recommends for persistent classes? All Java classes that will be persisted need a default constructor. All classes should contain an ID in order to allow easy identification of your objects within Hibernate and the database. This property maps to the primary key column of a database table. All attributes that will be persisted should be declared private and have get xx and set xx methods defined in the Java Beant style. A central feature of Hibernate, proxies, depends upon the persistent class being either non-final or the implementation of an interface that declares all public methods. All classes that do not extend or implement some specialized classes and interface required by the EJB framework. 20. What are the best practices to follow with Hibernate framework? Always check the primary key field access. If it's generated at the database layer, then you should not have a setter for this. By default, Hibernate set the field values directly without using setters. So if you want Hibernate to use setters, then make sure proper access is defined as at the rate access value equal access type. Property. If access type is property, make sure annotations are used with getter methods and not setter methods. Avoid mixing of using annotations on both filed and getter methods. Use native SQL query only when it can't be done using HQL, such as using the database specific feature. If you have to sort the collection, Use ordered list rather than sorting it using collection API. Use named queries wisely, keep it at a single place for easy debugging. Use them for commonly used queries only. For entity specific query, you can keep them in the entity bean itself. For web applications, always try to use genty data source rather than configuring to create a connection in Hibernate. Avoid many too many relationships. It can be easily implemented using bidirectional one too many and many tune relationships. For collections, 
try to use lists, maps, and sets. Avoid array because you don't get benefit of lazy loading. Do not treat exceptions as recoverable. Roll back the transaction and close the session. If you do not do this, Hibernate cannot guarantee that the in-memory state accurately represents the persistent state. Prefer DAO pattern for exposing the different methods that can be used with Entity Bean. Prefer lazy fetching for associations. This is the end of our Hibernate interview questions. We hope you enjoyed learning with YQ Academy. Until next time, goodbye.